On March 23rd, Bishop David Zubik celebrated the Memorial Mass for Monsignor Jules Roos, a Pittsburgh priest who served the poor in Chimbote, Peru for nearly 50 years. But we're here today because of the beautiful service that he rendered for nearly 49 years, really being the link, the bridge between Pittsburgh and Chimbote, Peru. And we know that it was his wish uh, that after his death he would be buried next to the people whom he served so lovingly. Jules accepted really a mandate from baptism to be missionary. All of us share that. And he reminds us, this liturgy I hope reminds us, everyone is called to share the good news of Jesus. We can't contain it. It's a treasure that is to be shared. And Jules, in his diocesan priesthood, but especially when he accepted the call to join the St. James Society and to go to Peru, he manifests that inner drive to be missionary, one that was there all the way back to baptism. It was Monsignor's wish that the work of the mission would continue to thrive and the people of Chimbote would never be forgotten. Even before he became a priest, Father Jules Roos knew that he wanted to serve the missions. I just, I always admired that idea of the missionary's life, you know, that I guess some part of it was adventure and then part of it was this idea of being part of spreading the faith. Uh, when I first applied to the uh, bishop for permission, he said no. Uh, it was a flat no, there was no explanation why and uh, that was it. And I went home and forgot about it. Four years later, the letter came from the St. James Society. He was on his way to Chimbote, Peru, to serve a term of five years in the desert. At first, he said his mother was concerned about the distance and his duties, but the entire Roos family quickly embraced the work, and family members have been spearheading the outreach from Pittsburgh for five decades. They quickly realized this is where God was calling their beloved jewels. He would not leave the people he came to love. The longer you're here, the more you become appalled with the fact that people live this way and the people are, are so neglected and so forth. And you feel almost uh, obliged to continue on helping them. It made me more aware of what poverty really means. I mean, I, we thought we were growing up in the Depression years. We thought we were poor, and, and by standards, by certain standards, we were poor. We sort of lived, in a broad sense, hand to mouth. Uh, but we weren't, we weren't destitute. And these people were even going beyond destitution. In the early years, Padre Julio encountered a visiting prelate in Peru, popular for helping the poor in South America, who was shocked to see how the people lived here. He came to Chimbote, and he looked around, and he said, this place is hopeless, there's nothing you can do for it, and walked away. Uh, but we ourselves never felt that way. We felt that if we could, if we could just help a few, even a few people, that was worth, wow, you know, to know that you were, in, through God, were instrumental in making someone's life better. It's, uh, it's a reaffirmation of what you're doing. You know. Monsignor Roos recalled the first year budget was $5,000, and they decided to expand the simple Posta Medica, the three-room clinic that served the neighborhood. So many young mothers bringing their dying newborn babies to the mission, hoping for a miracle. The miracle came with the construction of the Maternidad de Maria and the Social Work Center, and later a state-of-the-art laboratory. Pittsburgh people responding to the prayers from 4,000 miles away. I think it's something that the diocese has to be really be proud of, what, they've, what has been accomplished by the, through their collaboration. And as we increase our services, or make them better, it becomes more expensive, of course. And uh, we have to be very careful. We're always, we're always looking at the, uh, uh, the uh, bottom line, the, our, our balance, to make sure well, let's not, we can't spend ourselves out of existence this year. We've got to be careful that we, have, we have, can continue long enough that we can find other means. And that's what we're constantly seeking, other, other ways of financing this. 
The Maternidad perhaps crystallizes Padre Julio's vision of what the Chimbote mission is all about. Nearly 100,000 babies have been born in this Pittsburgh-built hospital, recalling Mary's desert journey to give birth to the baby Jesus in humble surroundings. Every boy and every girl, every mother in need, wrapped in loving care. The greatest satisfaction is in knowing that we have, in some way or another, and when I say we, I'm talking about everybody that works here. I'm not talking about uh, myself or the sisters or you know, we we have bettered these people's lives in a way because we take a we take a real concern uh, for these babies once they're born also, and these mothers don't feel abandoned. They don't feel like, well, here I am. I just had another child, uh, another responsibility. They know they can come here with when they have some real serious problem and so forth. And we know that we've strengthened that uh, family, such as it is, uh, and help those people to uh, live better. And, and we've seen, we've seen uh, the products of this. Uh, in many cases, people that were dirt poor have their children in uh, universities and uh, uh, becoming professional people. Those professional people are out on the front lines, not only working as clinicians, but the all-important trademarks of their home visits. Elizabeth and Zoraida have been going door to door in the slums to bring healing and to bring Christ to families in need. As Monsignor Jules and his fellow Pittsburgh priests cared for babies born with dangerous bilirubin levels, they found themselves performing many impromptu baptisms. Sometimes, however, the babies are in such dangerous condition that we decide that we have better give them emergency baptism because uh, they something could happen. Something could, we don't like to take chances like this. And uh, we probably have more baptisms here than in the average parish back in Pittsburgh. Padre Julio says the missionaries battle many everyday challenges. The very basic things like how to make sure we're going to have the water every day, how to make sure the light is going to be consistently on, and how to keep the dust down. I would say that these are probably our major preoccupations as far as the uh, conditions down here go. Padre Julio took his multifaceted role seriously and professionally, often as a morale booster for the patients and staff in the hospital here. My role with the nurses is primarily to encourage them, to uh, motivate them, to keep them upbeat. and. Uh, also to show them that we appreciate what they're doing as well as the parents that, uh, and trying to always, always, always encourage them to want to become better. As the diocese continues to support the work so vital to Padre Julio, listen to what he told us back in 2000 about the future of this mission. We're hoping that we're not going to need uh, the next Jules Roos or the next uh, Margaret Mary, Sister Margaret Mary or the next Sister Lillian. We're hoping that our, from our own uh, people working here, we can find ones that will replace us. And we have in, in probably 75%, at least 75% of the day-to-day -day toil and management is hand, in the hands of Peruvians. And so that is why the annual mission dinner for Chimbote will continue. It is why ambassadors in our diocesan schools and parishes will continue to pray, raising money and awareness, following the example of Monsignor Jules Roos, following his vision to bring Christ to the people of this desert city. As we remember the life of our beloved Padre Julio. Remember me in a Bible cracked and faded Remember me in a sanctuary filled with silent prayer.
it's all said and done. But what do you want people to know about Jules Roos? Uh, and his work here. As far as I'm concerned, they can forget Jules Roos, but I would like them to see this work as something that must be carried on. And this is what we're trying to do, to, to uh, build a staff that can carry on this work even after we're not here.